So is this a tiny home? How about this? Or even this? Well, guess what? They're all tiny homes. And we're gonna be talking about the five major differences when it comes to these particular tiny homes. So that way you make the best decision when you decide to buy a tiny home for yourself or someone in your family. I made a big mistake. And I'm one of these people that if, when I make a mistake, I wanna own up to it. And the mistake was this. In my last tiny home video, I kept referring to that particular home in the video as a tiny manufactured home. Yes, it's tiny. Yes, it's a home and it was made in a manufacturing plant. It is not a manufactured home. And the home that we're talking about in this particular instance is what they call a park model, which is made to completely different specifications as a manufactured home. And what makes this a park model? Well, it's built to RV standards, meaning that it's considered like a fifth wheel or a moving vehicle. Some people would even refer to this as a trailer. Although the distinct appearance of a park model RV sometimes leads people to think they're a small manufactured home, PM RVs are excluded from the definition of manufactured under the regulations of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Park model RVs are titled as vehicles in many states, just like RV types. PM RVs are unique among other types of RVs because the units can be up to 15 feet wide and 26 feet in length. PM RVs are sometimes designed with porches or decks and built within a footprint of the unit. The RV Industry Association supports policies that treat the park model RVs as the same as any other RV, including defining a park model RV as a type of RV in all states. The one thing I do wanna stress when it comes to park models, that a lot of RV parks will not allow you to keep your RV uh, park model RV in a park for a long period of time. So always check to see how long they'll allow you to keep your park model there. The second thing I want you to understand is that when you enter these parks that you're going to need a seal on your park model and they're gonna require that when you go in, set it up in their facilities. Whenever you purchase a park model, always make sure that you look for the value seal. The value seal is a condition of the membership of the RV Industry Association. And every RV park model RV produced by a member of a manufacturer must display the association seal. This seal communicates the manufacturer's certification that it complies with the RV standards adopted by the association. Further, it represents the manufacturer's pledge to meet the association's membership conditions, which includes subject to regular periodic compliance audits by the RVIA standard inspectors who monitor and provide education on thousands of requirements impacting the electrical, plumbing, heating, fire, and life safety systems in construction. And now that you know the specifications when it comes to a park model that's regulated under the RVIA, now let's talk about a HUD manufactured home, a real manufactured home that's meant for long-term living. That is governed completely different and actually much easier to finance than a park model RV because that would be considered something for a personal loan. But if you're buying a manufactured home, you can use your VA loans, your RD loans, and your FHA loans to purchase them. Typically, lenders don't like to do any uh, mortgage less than $60,000, but you can check with your local uh, mortgage broker to see if they would finance one that was less than $60,000. With that being said, how do you know if you're purchasing a manufactured home? Well, you have to look in the back and they will have a tag. Unlike park models, HUD has to certify any manufactured home. The safety and building materials in today's manufactured homes are the same as any site built home. The homes are engineered for wind and safety and energy. Manufactured homes are among the safest housing choices available today due to federal laws, requiring smoke detectors, escape windows, and limited combustible materials around the furnaces, water heaters, and range ovens. Unlike the park model home, with a manufactured home, you actually get a manufactured housing and HUD label verification. Each manufactured home on June 15, 1976 has a HUD certification label. This is a six digit number stamped onto a two inch by four inch metal aluminum plate. You can find the metal HUD tag on the exterior of the home. 
but you can also find the certification label and information data plates inside the home near the main electrical panel in the kitchen cabinet or bedroom closet. Okay, now that you know about the tiny homes that are considered park models and the tiny homes that are considered manufactured homes, what about the homes that you see that are on the old Google webs for 10 seconds? You can see that they're called micro cabins, prefab cabins, mini houses, mini tiny cabins. <laughs> They've been going by all sorts of different names. If you're gonna go this route, make sure it's certified with the IBC, the International Building Code. In most cases, it's going to be the same as your standard building code in your area. Always make sure that you check with your county or parish to see if they allow for this size home on a lot. The other thing is, is if you are buying a tiny home that's already been built, make sure it falls into the International Building Code. Also make sure it's been permitted through the parish and make sure that you're gonna be able to find out about the sewer as well. That's always really important. That always comes up no matter if it's a manufactured home or a tiny home, no matter what home, always make sure that the, the sewer system is certified. All those things are super important. It makes sure that in your area that the modular home or the prefab home or the mini house that you're going to have put down meets that international code. This has to sit on a, a fixed foundation. That's the only way that that's gonna meet that IRC code. There, we will never be moved again. And you have to always make sure that you're permitted correctly. So you're gonna have to be get permits for the wiring, plumbing, foundation, a septic system, of course. So whenever you're purchasing a tiny home that's a prefab home, always make sure that it falls under not only the IRC, but your local building codes as well. All right, before we go any further, we're gonna to talk to you about the containers. I forgot to mention in that in the clip, because I know a lot of people have been looking at containers as a possible place to uh, move into. Well, guess what? County officials many times are not gonna approve those. Unless you're an engineer and get them up to the codes of your area, the likelihood is gonna be very small that you get those approved. Mostly because of the fact that containers were never ever intended for human uh, habitation is what it says. And uh, county officials are afraid of them. They think they're a big giant fire hazard or safety hazards because they don't have any enough windows blah, 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 the list goes on. But if you are thinking about getting a container for a living residence, you must work very close with county officials, very close. And uh, if you're thinking about using it for storage, you're gonna have less of an uphill battle because that's what containers were intended for in the first place. So now let's just get back to your regular scheduled programming. I promise this is the last interruption. So my interest in tiny homes goes a little deeper than giving you information. I've been having this three-year goal in my mind to help house as many U.S. veterans as possible. It's estimated that there is about 40,000 U.S. vets that are currently homeless. I just found out that my local board of realtors is actually doing a tiny home project to house all the homeless here in our area and they're having a benefit coming up really soon. I'm going to put all the information for that benefit in the description as well as an area that you can donate to help our tiny home project here in Baton Rouge. I also wanted to mentioned that my friend Malcolm Lawson has put out a video about tiny homes about seven things you didn't know about the hidden cost of tiny homes and I'm gonna link that right here and I have more videos about tiny homes right here my name is Christina Smallhorn your real estate whisperer and I tell you all this because you matter